Are you a business owner struggling to get a loan for a house? In this video today, I'm gonna share some information that's gonna make everything more simple for you. So I get contacted by my next door neighbor and he's telling me, hey man, I'm trying to get a home loan and I make a lot of money, I make over six figures and because he's a sole proprietor, they won't give him a loan. Well, here's how we solve that problem. Well, I came up with a strategy for him and at this time, I wasn't his real estate agent. I just wanted to offer some help. And I asked him, hey, what's been going on? Do you have an agent? He said, at the time he had an agent, but the agent wasn't responding to him, responding to him because they ran into a brick wall and the real estate agent stopped answering his questions once they ran into the problem where he couldn't get the home loan. I told him, I can probably tell you what you're facing. You make over six figures, after you file your taxes, you're going from making over $100,000 to now in the government size, you're only making $40,000. Well, that's good for you for tax reasons, but nobody in their right mind is gonna loan you money to get a house when you're only showing that you're making $40,000. Well, the way to get over this, there's a couple options that I presented him. The first option is, before you file your taxes, Go talk to the loan officer and have them look at your finances and ask them what strategy can you put together so that you can file your taxes accordingly so that you can be able to afford a home loan. That's the first strategy. Second strategy is once he became my client, we were able to talk to his dad and had his dad become a co-signer. Okay. So there's a difference between being a co-signer and a co-borrower. If you were the co-signer, that just means you're helping an individual sign for the loan, but the co-signer does not particularly own the home. The co-borrower is also helping the person apply for the loan, but it, they also have a stake in owning the home. Meaning, if something was to happen to the person trying to get the loan, the co-borrower can take ownership of the house and sell the house if they need to. The co-signer cannot take ownership of the house if something happens to the person originally taking ownership of the house. Hope that makes sense. But in the end, we ended up going to a new construction home builder and we was able to get him a lower interest rate, plus he qualified for the loan. And today he lives in his <laughs> brand new house and he's happy as all get out that he was able to get a home. So a lot of people get frustrated when it comes time to getting money for your home loan. You have to understand if you're borrowing $300,000, $400,000 from a loan officer, they kind of have a right to ask for additional information to make sure that you're fit for this loan of $400,000. Meaning, you don't have the $400,000. These people are having to go to investors to put their neck on the line to loan this large amount of money to you. So please keep in mind and have a little bit of patience with these guys and girls as they go about securing the finances for your, your home. Put yourself in their shoes. How much information would you want somebody if you want from someone, if you were loaning $400,000 to an individual? Wouldn't you want to protect your investment so that's the kind of situation that you want to put yourself in and have a little patience with these individuals when you're asking for such a large sum of money. If you want to sell your neighbor's house, all you got to do is overprice your house. Think about when there's a sale at a department store. People rush into a sale. Well, if your house is the same square footage, same number of bedrooms, same number of bath, and you guys are next to each other, you overpriced your home. Your neighbor priced the home according to the market, which is below the price of your home. Which home do you think people are gonna rush to buy? They're gonna rush to buy your neighbor's home. This actually happened on the street that I live in. A house sold really fast. In this case, the home was fully paid off, so they priced it just below market value. Now here's the thing most people don't know. If you place your home just a little bit below market value, it actually creates a buying frenzy. Think of eBay. I don't know how many people sold on eBay before, but I used to sell on eBay. You could take a video console. The video console is worth, let's just say $300. I'm not in that market anymore, but I, I used to be. Actually back then, you could buy a, a uh, 
I think it was a Nintendo Wii for about $254. You go to eBay and you place it for 99 cents, way below market value. Now people start bidding on it. They know good and well they ain't getting that video console for 99 cents. So somebody else bids $2 and it creates a buying frenzy. Without fail, the video console always sold for 300 bucks. So how do you go from 99 cents to 300 bucks? You place it below market value. You gotta know your, you, you need to know your market to, in order to do this though. You can do the same with houses. You can create a buying frenzy by placing the price of your home just below market value and you get the buyers competing over each other. You sell your house over the asking price.